My name's Pauline Bacon and that's my sign name. My job is I teach BSL Level 1 and Level 2 and I'm deaf. I was born hearing. I wasn't profoundly deaf straight away but I became hard of hearing at 3 through measles. It was terrible. So that damaged my hearing at 3. I could still hear quite well and I had an old fashioned hearing aid, this box that was on the front, like the battery. And I could hear pretty well. So then I was five, and by the time I was 11, my parents bought the new hearing aids that came out that were worn behind the ears, and I could hear pretty well with those. But then by the time I was 33, I realized I was profoundly deaf. And I also suffer with tinnitus which is a noise that goes on 24 hours. And I tried to cover it with the noise from the hearing aids, but I couldn't do that. So I knew myself, but then I was deaf. Pauline has been working at Newark College for a very long time, and then due to the retirement of the BSL tutor at Lincoln last year, she offered to take over the Lincoln provision as well, which we're very pleased about because she's a very popular tutor. And she's actually got two groups running at Lincoln this year, full, quite full groups. Uh, we've got one group running at Newark this year, as opposed to two last year, but we're hoping that with a bit more publicity next year that we can have you know, a couple of groups at Newark and a couple at Lincoln. I think the BSL classes at Lincoln and Newark are very successful. They respond to a growing need within the public to, to provide this sort of thing. A lot of jobs ask for BSL. A lot of teachers and learning assistants now um, have deaf children in their classes and so need to have at least some level of BSL in order to communicate with them and parents who've got deaf children sometimes come and learn. So I think we are responding to a need in, in society and people generally really enjoy it, although it's harder work than people think that it's going to be, I think, generally. It wasn't easy for me to manage when people, hearing people, were chatting. At the age of 11, it was okay, but then when I was 33, I was profoundly deaf. And I started to think, oh, right, okay, so I can't hear anything at all. I felt disappointed. But you know what, I'm quite a strong person. I went to work in a factory. Um, at that time, I was 17 and I mixed with the hearing people who worked there. I was the only deaf person there at the time. And there was no communication for me there because I had to write everything because they couldn't sign. And then later on, when I was 33 and I knew that I was profoundly deaf, really it did impact me. And I thought, it's really not easy at all. I was married at that time. I've got two children who are now grown up and they're hearing. And I was the only one who was deaf in my family when, when I was growing up. My husband's deaf though. I've had a hard life I think, but I really think positively. It doesn't matter what happens. My eyes are fine, my body's fine, I can see well, so everything's okay. And I'm proud of myself being deaf now. I felt it was important for hearing people to become involved with deaf people just for the sake of communication, to be honest. I wanted to teach people. Hearing people want to learn sign language. Probably they want to work with children or whatever, so I like to teach them. I took British Sign Language because I work in a building society and we often get customers in um, that we need to communicate with. And I just thought it would help me along the way if I could speak a little bit of sign language. Um, I took BSL because my daughter was born deaf and it will help her as she grows up. I think it's good being in a class with a, a tutor that is actually deaf because you're not in the temptation just to speak English all the while. You're going to look at her, you're going to use your mouth more with a quiet tone and sign. I think the fondest memory of being in Pauline's class is it is quite more humorous than what I thought it was going to be. It's not as strict, it's more light-hearted than being in a BSL class than what I thought it was going to be. So I was in a hearing school and it was very difficult. They didn't know how I felt. All the children were the same and we were all sitting at desks and writing and I felt the same as them. 
that I was writing away. I was very poor. My reports were always very poor. Then when I got through to 11, I loved everything visual and that was mostly sport because I couldn't write properly, because I couldn't hear what was going on, because all the kids were very noisy. So I became shy and a little bit withdrawn and I didn't really know what to do. And then someone, my mum started to think about me and my mum worked in a factory with a man whose daughter was deaf. So she went and asked him, your daughter's deaf, is that right? He said, yes, that's right. So I said, how do you communicate? Oh, we sign. Oh, I've never heard of sign language. I've never heard of that before, she said. But my daughter's really not deaf. She speaks very well, so what happens? Oh, she goes to Doncaster School, and it's a boarding school. And my parents visited and had a look at the head teacher and had a chat with him and uh, had a look at the kids. And there were so many children, and they were all signing, and I'd never seen it before. And to me, to be quite honest, it looked stupid. I mean, I have to say and be honest with you, I thought, what is that? I thought, you know what, you should be speaking, you should be learning how to read and write and everything, not signing. What is the matter with you? I started to cry and panic. I wanted to go home. My mum said, oh, you know what, you'll be okay. Just stay there for two months and then you'll come home and then come back and for another three months. Then you come back for Christmas and Easter and summer. And as I grow up, I thought, you know, all these children are the same, but inside I was confused and I thought, I'm not deaf, I'm hard of hearing, I'm not deaf, I can lip read. And it was the same as Rosemary. She was hard of hearing, so I thought, oh, all right, we're the same, so what are we signing for? And then when I was 33, I found I was profoundly deaf. I thought, oh, I looked back and I thought, I understand it, I've got it now. The children at that time were all profoundly deaf. It means they could hear nothing. So everything had to go through their eyes. It was visual and sign language was their language. I was hard of hearing, yes. I could hear a little bit and I could lip read and I could write. And I thought, oh, wow, that really impacted me. And that was my experience at school and what it was like, my different experience. So I've been deaf and hard of hearing and hearing. I think some people don't accept me. I think my parents didn't, to be honest. From the age of 11 to 17, I think they did. But when I was found out to be profoundly deaf, I don't think my parents accepted that, really. I went to work in a factory and the people there, you know, I could ask them things. I was doing well, everything was positive. I accepted myself as being deaf. But the hearing, well, their attitude, it was okay. I just had to accept my life for what it was, really, at that time. And that's what a lot of people are like, I think. And I've met parents of deaf children, and I try and encourage them because they need to accept their children's deafness. And if they've got deaf children, I know that they feel the same as me. And I think about the parents, you know, I've got to think, what, it, what would the child need? and then it makes it easier. And then the parents can accept, you know what, I've got a deaf child, so that's okay. And that's my life. As long as I think my eyes are fine, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I can't hear anything, I can sign well, so that's not a problem. I think it's important to accept your life for other people. I don't know, hearing people may have a different view of that, I don't know.